You want to play piano well, but sight reading feels like a huge roadblock. It takes ages to read and make out what notes are, and you wish you knew how to learn and play pieces much faster. Hey everyone, it's Dreza here. Today we're going to break down seven common rookie mistakes regarding sight reading. I want to share with you how you can fix them so you can read and learn music much faster. Mistake number one is not practicing sight reading regularly. So the skill of sight reading is very much like learning to read a language. If you're someone that's played maybe just between five to 10 songs in your piano career, it's unlikely you've built enough skill in sight reading to be able to just kind of like pull out something simple and be able to make out how to play it quickly. Just like wanting to be proficient in reading a language, you need a lot of input. So make sure you set aside daily time to practice a bit of sight reading. I recommend between five to 10 minutes either at the start or at the end of your practice session. Every day, just do it a little bit every day. Mistake number two is not looking ahead. As I played those eight measures for you, what's actually happening in my brain is I was actually never really living in the present. I was always living in the future. So as I kind of like scan the first bar, I'm already on the second bar, already on the third bar, on the fourth bar. I'm sort of like just always like scanning, computing, okay, good. And then I start to execute it and my brain's already reading the next bit. So try this next time when you're practicing sight reading, always just read one or two measures ahead. Mistake number three is focusing too much on individual notes. Let's look at the left hand in this part. So it is an A minor chord here, A minor chord here. Here it changes chord, it changes back. A good side reading tip I have for you for let's say this part is not to read the individual notes, but rather to kind of like read the shape. So in bar three, we have this A, C, E shape, very typical, you know, with your five, three, one. And then we can see there is a bit of a change here and I can see the pinky is actually staying. It's the middle and the top notes that are moving up. So all I need to do is kind of like, just think about, oh, it's going from this shape to this shape. And going back to the shape. Even let's say here in the right hand. I'm quite lucky in this little passage here, a lot of these notes are just steps. There are no kind of awkward skips or anything. So what I'm doing here is I'm reading the first note and I'm just kind of seeing, does it go up or does it go down rather than reading uh, like it's like A, B, C, B, A. I'm just going up, down. I read the first note is A and it's just kind of stepping going up. Next one's uh, D, starting from D and just going up. Next one from A, just from A and just going up rather than like kind of analyzing each individual letter. If we come back to language, it's a little bit like reading words rather than reading individual letters in a word. So the solution here is to try to read more in chunks rather than individual notes. Try to read chords more, read intervals more, which is the spacing between each note. For example, if it's a fifth, right? A fifth is always going to be a line line or a space space. So over time of reading a lot of this and knowing that's like a fifth interval and usually I play with my one five, I have learned to recognize the fifths in all kinds of music and I can kind of like execute it very quickly because it's something I've trained to do. Speaking of chords and intervals and patterns, it leads me very nicely into sight reading mistake number four, which is neglecting music theory. Understanding some basic music theory is gonna go a long way for helping you to sight read pieces better. Before I even read this piece, I can see there are no sharps, no flat at the start, which tells me it's likely gonna be in C major or A minor. And I can see the first chord is an A minor chord, which tells me, oh, I should be thinking in A minor. I should be thinking A minor is like the tonal center. And it's also likely, my music theory knowledge also tells me the piece usually, not always, but it usually starts in the tonic chord and ends in a tonic chord, which means it'll start in A minor and it likely will end in A minor too. So this is the end part of the piece. Yeah, so before I even struck that very last chord, it was almost like I could predict it was going to some kind of A minor chord. So knowing this basic music theory knowledge 
helps me to make good predictions about where the music is going, which therefore helps me to sight read better. So really take the time guys to study and understand key signatures, common chords, common chord progressions, time signatures, rhythms. It will help you with your sight reading very, very much. Mistake number five, Sight reading pieces that are too hard. When you're practicing sight reading, you have to take the difficulty notch down by a few levels. It's not gonna do you any good to be sight reading something like this and fumbling you know, throughout the whole thing. I would much rather you pick something that is a lot simpler to sight read, but give yourself the challenge of sight reading this piece at a very high success level, let's say 80 or 90%. In this video, I've selected a few pieces from Bergmuller. I recommend you check him out. Bergmuller, Opus 100, a lot of kind of like easy intermediate pieces for people to try, either to learn as real pieces or for sight reading. So I want you to pick pieces where you can do kind of something like this. Even if you fumble, make a couple of mistakes along the way, at least you can kind of keep the music going, keep the flow happening. This way you'll learn something from the sight reading practice process. You'll also have a lot of fun because you'll have a sense of success. And you can also easily track your progress of sight reading over time. Start with easy stuff first, work on the things where you can kind of have a sense of flow and over time give yourself harder and harder pieces to challenge yourself. Mistake number six, Stopping every time you make a small error. This is related to the previous mistake. In sight reading, you wanna practice this fluency and the feeling of not stopping the music. So let's say if you make an error. Try to just keep going, try to just keep going, try to just keep going. When you practice the skill of never ever stopping, you are helping yourself to see the bigger picture of the music. You're also helping yourself to do another concept that was said earlier in this video about always reading ahead. Always reading ahead, always going forward, and never ever stopping. Mistake number seven is not writing in your sheet music. Now, for some reason, I see some people think sheet music is supposed to remain, you know, clean. I am quite the opposite to that. I think your music should look, in fact, as messy as possible. Please write as many notes and reminders as you need. I find the very, very simple things such as writing in the fingerings or writing in the note names, it can speed up your progress and make learning a lot more effective. So let's say your objective is to learn this piece. Once you sigh read it for one time, two times, three times, and you're starting to see, okay, where, what are the parts that trip you up? Please grab a pen and write in it. Write out the parts that are tripping you up, whether it's like a note name or whether it's like a rhythmic thing or whether it's the chord or whether it's a fingering, just write things down. I promise it'll make your learning a lot faster. We've come to the end. Which one of these can you relate to the most? Let me know in the comments below. Let me also know if you have any other piano questions. Happy practicing and I'll catch you in the next video.